So a couple of days ago, some new data was released on data.gov.sg. This new data has to do with Singapore University's course intake numbers. So there's intake numbers by course by year. There is a graduate numbers and then there are enrollment numbers. So I thought I would do some simple data analysis, a very, very simple data visualization, nothing very complicated. And uh, I'd like this to be useful to the parents out there who might be considering what are the courses you want your children who might be going to university maybe next year. Um, hopefully also to potential students who are going to those courses and then um, also to the general public who are thinking what's the general trend that the Singapore society is going because we can see some clues from this data. So let's get started. I'd just like to briefly tell everybody where you can find this data. You can find this data on data.gov.sg which you can see on the screen over here. And uh, to be able to access this very specific piece of data, you can go to the search bar and just type in universities universities and there you go the very first suggestion that's the one this is the data set that I am using and you can see here is that the years go from 2018 you can take a scroll down uh, it is the years from 2005 up to 2018 unfortunately it didn't include 2019 numbers but I think that's fair enough as uh, up to this point we can still use it so the different columns it has is that it has year there's also uh, by gender note that MF represents both male and female together whereas F stands for just female alone so if you want to get the numbers for the male you have to do some simple subtraction the courses there go by accountancy, architecture, building and real estate and so on. They kind of bunch everything together. So don't expect to look for mechanical engineering specifically or you know civil engineering. They bunch all of those things together into engineering sciences or else we'll end up with hundreds of courses and the data is not very useful anymore. Intake numbers, enrollment numbers and graduate numbers like I've mentioned. So let's just jump into the analysis. So after looking at the data, I've decided to ask myself some questions that I'd like to have answered. These questions are which is the causes that have the highest intakes. So what's the reason for asking this question in the first place? Well, the implications are there are particular causes with highest intakes would mean that these causes are easier to enroll in too. So if you are aiming to go to a particular course where the intake is extremely small, then it's going to be very hard to get into those courses because there are only a specialized number of students that are going to be enrolled into the course. The other interesting implication that you can think of is the courses with the highest intake numbers typically are also less competitive. So what would then happen is these courses, sometimes they tend to be a little bit easier. Of course, I'm generalizing here. That's not necessarily true. But do remember that universities also want to hit a certain number of percentage graduates. So if they make the courses difficult or more difficult than necessary, then uh, a lot of the students who don't who didn't want to pick this course in the first place would have difficulty graduating. Another question I want to ask is which are the causes they are seeing an increase intake numbers or decreasing intake numbers. Now there are implications to this question of course and the implications are it would then be able to tell us which areas the Singapore government is projecting to have higher or lower demand for university graduates. It is also an implication of the trend in Singapore society in general as you will see when we take a look at the data later. Here are some accompanying data notes that came with the data so just quickly run through it. The university's data that's being used here came, come from six local universities as NUS, NTU, SMU, the big three. There's also SIT, SUTD and SUSS. So it's quite a big chunk of data here. So the very first data visualization that you're seeing here is I just simply took the intake numbers, only the intake numbers, and I have faceted them according to causes. As the columns go from left to right, you're looking at the years from 2005 up to 2018. So there are 14 years worth of data over here. So it's basically the same data here, but what I'm doing now is I'm putting them in terms of the proportion. So in every column you see here represents a particular year. Uh, from the, on the left, you'll see 2005 and all the way on the right, you see 2018. And uh, we can roughly see pretty clearly that uh, the green color region of engineering sciences has a very large uh, amount as well as the that uh, brownish golden color which is business administration so and you can also see the trend over the years right so for example right at the bottom there natural and physical and mathematical sciences that pink color portion is getting smaller and smaller so let's zoom in on the year 2018 then which is the which are the causes with the largest number of uh, intake students so in this chart we can then see a spectrum of which are the causes with the largest intakes all the way down to the causes with the lowest intakes and the cause with the largest intake is engineering sciences it's really not much of a surprise i don't think this uh, large largest intake rank for engineering sciences has changed in the past 20 years i suspect it's the same because uh, when i went to ntu 20 years ago 
engineering was still one of the largest faculties out there, uh, as well as in NUS. But we're starting to see more courses come up from SMU, uh, SIT, and SUSS that is not engineering related. So those numbers are probably going up. I suspect that a big part of the intake numbers from humanities and social sciences are coming from SUSS as well as from SMU and SIT. Rank number three would be business administration. So you see a very large proportion of students over there. The feeling is roughly the same as if it was uh, decades ago when I was in university. I just simply don't remember humanities and social sciences being that high on the list. On the other end of the spectrum, we will see courses such as dentistry, mass communication and education registering very, very low. So those are, those, those are the courses with the lowest intake numbers. So for example, if you are planning to take a degree course in dentistry, you've got to be mentally prepared that it's going to be very difficult to get into dentistry because the intake is just extremely low. I have friends who are dentists in Singapore and they actually got their degrees overseas. They didn't take it in Singapore. Probably for this reason, it's tough to get into. So say for example, I really want to be a dentist, but um, you know, I have the passion for it. But in my A-levels, I just didn't do as well in some of the other subjects that doesn't influence my passion in dentistry as much. And because of that, I couldn't become a dentist. So they might have went overseas. So I think we are able to answer the first question already. Which courses have the highest intakes? So the answer by rank is engineering sciences, humanities and social sciences, and then business and administration. So these are the courses that are easier to enroll into. Uh, and these courses are maybe they are less competitive. Now, note here though, engineering sciences, because I was an engineering student myself, I can kind of attest to engineering sciences having a less competitive environment. I mean like there are those who are seriously godlike and they study like crazy and then there's the majority of us who are like eh, university is kind of fun. But uh, I wouldn't say the same thing for business and administration or humanities and social sciences. I, I heard that students there study really really hard. So what I've done in this data visualization here is, is actually the same data but in this time I have freed up the vertical axis for every single course. Therefore, we can get a more in-depth look at the trend. Because we have freed up the y-axis to be independent, then now what we can do is we can see which of the courses are trending. So uh, we can see quite clearly here that business administration is trending upwards. Engineering sciences as well, though not as much, is still trending upwards, but slightly less. Health sciences is really taking a climb. It's climbing higher and higher. And at the bottom left there, you can see correspondingly, medicine is also climbing up. Uh, the one in blue, you can see information technology is skyrocketing as well. And here is where perhaps we can talk about some of the trends that are happening in Singapore. So health sciences and medicine, I think that's quite clear. We are starting to see an aging population where uh, we need a lot more healthcare professionals. We need more nurses. We need more doctors. And hence, it's really no surprise that healthcare, uh, health sciences and medicine is really starting to go up. Information technology is also very interesting because we are talking about AI and uh, the government has been very very open in pushing for more AI and more fintech and this number is just going to continue to rise so there's really no question about that. What about the causes that are seeing a decreasing number then? Well, we are seeing education decreasing and this might be quite surprising because we think that education, uh, we, there's always, we always need to churn out more and more teachers, isn't it? But with education coming down, it really does mean one thing that the number of students in Singapore are clearly declining. We know that because the Singapore birth rate is just going down and down and down and down. And uh, many schools have been forced to combine, you know, many schools have merged already. Some of the JCs have already merged. We are looking at poly intake numbers also starting to go lower and lower. And it is really not very surprising. Services, well, perhaps there was a big bump in about 2010, 2011, maybe because of the integrated resorts, for example, like Marina Bay Sands, as well as uh, the, the Sentosa integrated resort over there. But then this number has dropped quite significantly. But this year, 2020, with COVID hitting us, I really don't see services numbers jumping very much higher. In fact, I think if, if anything, there's going to be too many professionals out there in the service industry and maybe this number would need to be reduced. The thing that's really interesting to me is actually natural, physical and mathematical sciences. Because when we talk about AI, we are talking about we are talking about uh, a lot of mathematics behind AI. Data science has a lot of mathematics. It has a lot of statistics. And it's really strange that this number is actually uh, decreasing. So I think we have also answered the second question. What is the implied trend in Singapore society then? We can see that for medicine, for healthcare, we are seeing an aging population in Singapore. That's clear. We are seeing information technology means we are going more towards AI. We are using more data science. Uh, business administration, they want Singapore to be more of a hub. All of this makes sense. In terms of the lower demand education, we've seen that the numbers, uh, the birth numbers are dropping. There are less and less Singapore-born students going into schools. 
services well perhaps with the the, the IR and then now with COVID-19 we're not sure where that's going to go but chances are it's going to go even lower uh, med- natural physical and mathematical sciences I'm, I'm not sure so I hope this has been useful to you this is just a very quick data analysis a very quick uh, and dirty data visualization uh, and hopefully you've managed to glean some information from this see you next time in the next video thank you very much for watching